welcome back to Make It With Mod Podge. My name is Kathy Fillion, and I've got some really fun dollar store DIYs to show you for your holiday decor. Now, one of the things that I love about the holidays is baking. So we are using some things that we got from the dollar store in the baking section to create our really fun designs today. We're gonna to be using a dollar store rolling pan to make this North Pole bakery wreath. So you can see we're just gonna be using paper on that rolling pin and using some letters to spell out North Pole Bakery. And then over here, this is so fun, you may have seen this trend. These are cake pan wagons and it starts with just a cake pan from the dollar store. And we're going to be painting it up with some of our folk art paint and we're gonna be using Mod Podge satin. Today, I'm going to start with our fun cake pan wagon and then we'll show you how to do the wreath. And I've got a bonus little fun idea at the dollar store and at all your craft stores, you can see all these great little wood letters like we have down here. And I'm just gonna show you quickly how you can cover them with paper to make ornaments or to spell out something on your holiday decor. Really fun and easy, quick projects today. All right, let's just dive right on in to our fun cake pan wagon. Before we get started crafting, I wanna talk about the parts. We've got our cake pan here and our wheels are just made out of these little storage containers. These were also from the dollar store and our handle here for the wagon is a spatula. So simple and fun to put this together. So we started with a basic cake pan and to prep it out, I painted around all of the edges, first using some red folk art chalk. And then uh, I did two coats of the chalk. Because this is a nonstick pan, it took a couple of coats. And then I topped that off with some full cart multi-surface paint in red. For the sides, I wanted to Mod Podge on just some decorative paper. And you can see that here in our finished sample, we've got that really cute buffalo check there. So I just trimmed my paper to size. Um, and then because the pan is rounded there, you'll see that I didn't go around the edges. That would be very tricky to cut the paper perfectly like that. So I just left those corners painted the red. So I wanna go ahead and just Mod Podge that paper down to my surface there. So this is super simple to do. I'm using the full cart, or sorry, not full cart, the Mod Podge satin. And you could use gloss if you wanted to or matte. I'm just gonna apply the Mod Podge satin to the back of the paper. This is just regular 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. You could use holiday wrapping paper, you could use old cards, whatever fun Christmassy type papers that you have. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and just pick that piece up. And for my design, there we go, I have the red part going towards the top. So now I'm just going to position that on and you have a moment to kind of wiggle it into place before you press down. So that looks pretty even across the sides and across the bottom. So then I'll just go ahead and press that down, just like so. And then wait about 15 minutes before you top coat to seal it down. I'm gonna go ahead and show you top coating. Normally I like to, it for it to dry a tiny bit, but I just wanna show you really quickly. That's how you're gonna go over it and that will seal that paper down. Plus it will give it that satin finish. Now, if you wanted a matte finish, you would go ahead and just use matte Mod Podge. If you wanted a glossy finish, you would use the gloss. And you can see here, I'm doing nice long brush strokes. That will help you have really smooth brush strokes once it's dry. It looks a little milky right now, but that's gonna dry clear. So it's really that simple just to get some cool paper down right on your edge of your <laughs> baking pan wagon. So let's take a look at the baking pan wagon one more time. So we've got our paper down here. Now I wanna show you how I did the wheels. So the wheels are really easy to do. Now online, I have seen people do the wheels out of all different kinds of things. Dish strainers, checker pieces, like jumbo yard checkers. So it really anything that you find at the dollar store that you can paint black, or that's a disc shape that you think that can work as a wheel. 
You just want it to be sturdy enough that it will actually hold up your pan though. So for this one, I decided to go ahead and just glitter the inside with some black glitter. And that is for the color of our wheel. And I'm gonna use the Mod Podge to do that as well. So I just went in, go ahead and add a bunch of Mod Podge to the bottom. You could do it on the outside if you wanted to, but I really like that sort of clear 3D effect. Go ahead and add the glitter right in there, sort of roll it around and dump out your extra. And that is how simple it is. Then once it's dry, you can go ahead and seal it up, but you can see that that is how our little wheel came about. And again, when you're at the dollar store, just look for things that you could either paint with your folk art paints or something that you could glitter, just anything that's round like a hockey puck that you can use as a wheel. Now for our handle, I went ahead, I loved this spatula that I found because it had a wood handle. This was at the dollar store also. Um, but I didn't like that the silver was here because I kind of, I loved this copper pan and I decided not to paint the inside of the pan because it's such a pretty color for uh, Christmas. So I went ahead and I did go ahead and add the paper to the handle and then I just added a little sprig of Christmas decor there. So let's go ahead and get our glitter back in. I wanna show you a trick. So when you're glittering, or not glittering, when you're Mod Podging onto skinny round objects like this, I go ahead and I cut my paper to size and I like to give it a pre-curl. So I know that my spatula is going to be this way, right? So I want this portion to not have the overlap. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hold it there into place. And then you go ahead and just kind of wrap it around with your hands and just go ahead and get that paper ready to go around a small round surface. You could, um, depending upon your paper, uh, mist it with a little bit of water or if you're using a napkin for sure you could do that see how now I have that great curve in there and that makes it a lot easier when you're trying to go around those small curves so just go ahead and add your Mod Podge formula right onto the back of that paper and then we'll put pick it up and again this is where I don't want my seams so let's go ahead just kind of press there, wrap around. The hardest part about this is getting it lined up straight. So let's keep that straight as we can get it. There we go. And just kind of seal that down. Press with your hand. and seal that down real good. I think we are good. All right, now at this point, you would again let it dry, but once it's dry about 15 minutes, you could go in and just top coat it. And if you top coat it, then that's going to give you the same finish. You can use kind of smooth it with your finger if you want. I'm making a mess over here, everybody. You wanna make sure that you top coat it so that it has the same finish as the outside of your wagon there. So just as simple as that. Now I wanna show you how we put it all together. It's very, very simple. Oh, and also last week, uh, we made these really fun reversible houses. So you can check out last week's Make It With Mod Podge. We have these really fun houses that are um, Thanksgiving and fall on one side, and then boom, turn them around, you're ready for your holiday decor. So I thought, you know what, let's put them in our, our little cake pan wagon. So I've got some other items here for decorations. Let's go ahead and get those out so you can see. Okay, let's take a look at the cake pan wagon. So we've got a few different elements going on. I've got the wheels here and we have on the back side our spatula. So once your design is done, you're gonna glue your spatula here to be the handle. And I do wanna show you because so much of this stuff is non-stick now. So I did glue it down with metal glue, and then I went in and I gave it a little rim of hot glue around the edge just to extra secure it. And same with our wheels. So I measured, so they were equal distance, glued them with metal glue, and then if you can look closely, I went in and just added a little extra hot glue there just to secure it. And that's really 
all you have to do. And then it's a matter of just filling it up with all sorts of fun things. So I've got my houses from last week, a little village going on, and then you can just add any kind of greenery or any kind of fun things. If you're doing a you know, teacher's table at school or a buffet or something, this is a really cute way to display a bunch of things like that. All right, guys, now let's move on to our North Pole Bakery Reese. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside and I'll be back in a quick second. Well, I hope you love that cake pan wagon just as much as I do. And my girls are going crazy for it. They're fighting over who gets to play with it. I don't think they understand that the wheels don't actually work. All right, let's dig into this fun wreath now. So let's go over some of the elements of the wreath. I've got uh, the rolling pin here in the center that I used the Mod Podge to cover the paper on there. And then I've got the little wood letters just to spell out North Pole uh, Bakery. We added some curly cues and some fake peppermints and some balls. This is a really, really simple wreath. But if you know any bakers or if you love baking cookies like we do at this house, this will be fun to hang in your kitchen or even on your front door. So for the rolling pin, now this came from the dollar store and I went ahead and I painted our handles with the full cart home decor chalk um, in red. And then I cut my paper to size uh, onto the rolling pin. So I, what I did was I just measured across and then the same way that we sort of did that pre-crease, I'm just gonna go ahead. It's not gonna crease as much as it did on the handle of that spatula, but just a little bit. Go ahead and give it, get it used to going around a curve. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna use that same satin formula and we're gonna apply the Mod Podge to the back of our paper. Just as easy as that. Make sure you hit those edges real good. And over here. And get that edge there. Okay. Now, sometimes Mod Podging on round things that roll is not the easiest, but let's see. Go ahead and put that into position. Crease down, push that down there. And then we're gonna just pick it up. And from the center, work our way around. Kind of wiggle it into position all the way around, just like so. Now once it's around, I think we're pretty good. Let's go ahead and make sure find my seal. There we go. Just push down on that seam really well so that that edge there doesn't pop up. And it really couldn't be any easier than this. This is, this is like it. So if you wanted to add some letters, you could just use scrapbooking letters or stickers, or if you have a die cutting machine, you might wanna add some die cutting letters over there. These were letters that I found at the dollar store and they were just the perfect size. You could do a family initial, all sorts of different things like that. So that's how you can quickly make over your rolling pin and then just turn it into any kind of fun wreath design. I also think these would be really cute sitting in a windowsill uh, of a kitchen. So great for the holidays, but could be cute for other occasions too. Now I wanna show you really fast while we wrap it up, these letters. So these letters spell out bake, and of course you could spell anything that you wanted to. Um, these would be fun, you know, you could add a ribbon to the back of them and create personalized ornaments with them. Or if you wanted to spell something out on a wreath or any of your holiday projects, this is a really easy way to get a little bit of holiday paper into your designs. So let's go ahead, oh, I almost misspelled bake. <laughs> so let's go ahead, I've got my K here, and all I did was on the back side of my paper, so you, you wanna trace on the back side. See, I have a little bit of my ink mark there. So you just trace out your letter and cut it out. And then I'm gonna add the satin Mod Podge to the back of that letter, the paper letter, I should say. And then we'll pick it up and just position it right onto your letter. These letters come pre-painted white, black, and natural at the craft store. Yeah, let's see. And I'll be putting in the description different places where I got everything. Or I should say in the comments. There we go. 
Just go ahead and press down. And that's how quickly you can take a plain letter and just give it a little bit of holiday paper. Again, this was scrapbook paper, but you can use wrapping paper. You could use old holiday cards. I love recycling them into new designs. It's really endless. Add a ribbon, create an ornament, or use them to spell something out on your holiday decor. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. I hope you love these really fun baking inspired projects. We've got our cake pan wagon back here, our rolling pin wreath, and our really fun bake letters. We'll be back here next week with some more Mod Podge ideas for you, and we'll see you live on Facebook on Thursdays and live on YouTube on Saturdays. Make sure you use those hashtags Mod Podge and Plaid Crafts, and hit subscribe. We'll see you next time. Happy holidays.